We all need a little context, and some of us may be a little more than others. And the same could be said for our properties. You see, we add loads of our components and they have tons of properties on them. And it's always useful to have a few little helper functions just to push us along. So in this video, I will show you how, and it will obviously boost your productivity by up to, you know, 0.1% maybe. Okay, so after that weak intro explanation, let me run through exactly what we're gonna do. You see, we have properties on a component. As you can see here, they're nicely listed. Now, some of these properties often require the same operation performed on them a lot. Take, for instance, the example of a vector free here defining an offset. Now, how often have you had to zero out a vector free? Go into the X, then the Y, and then the Z. Well, wouldn't it be nice to simply right click and select zero from a menu? Well, we can, and this is how. So here is a custom editor for my character class. And if you don't know how to create a custom editor, welcome to my channel. And I've covered it quite a few times before. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description on how to create the one and only editor class you ever need. Well, not really, you have to derive off it, but go watch that after this video, you'll love it. So we're going to start with the on enable and on disable methods. These will have some secret unicorn sprinkle applied to them in the form of the editor application contextual property menu callback. That's a particular mouthful. And we're gonna use this to call a method that we're gonna call on property context menu. Now, before we move on, we'll make sure to cut this callback off in our on disable because we're good, clean, tidy developers and that's what we do. Now let's jump into the method. What does it give us? Well, it gives us a menu and a property. Basically, when I right click on a property in the editor, this little method gets a poke. Now we wanna make sure we're working on the right property. And I'm gonna use a new example here and not the vector free. And I'll explain why just afterwards. So make sure to stay to the end. Now, this property is called display point, and we will check for it before we move on. Next, we're going to add a new entry to the menu, and we're gonna call this create. Now what we want this menu item to do is create a new game object, and then enter it as the display point entry. Think of this display point as where our health bar or our name for our character might show up in game. Now we need to do two things to finish up. The first, we make sure to stick in an undo, because we want to be able to undo. And the second, we want to make sure to tell the serialized object for our property to apply those modified properties. Now let's jump back into Unity. And if we click on the big fella here from the brilliant artist Proto Factor, link in the description, as well as a link to the amazing castle from Nature Manufacturer, we can see we have several properties in our expector. And the one we're interested in is at the end, and it's called Display Point. We right click and we have the usual menu items, but also now we have our own named create. Click on this, we'll magic a new game object and set it into the property. And of course, because we're good little developers, undoing will clear it all up for us. Great, right? But what about that offset? What about our vector free? Are we gonna do it in the same way? Well, no, it's big brain time. Instead of making a new menu for all of our editors that happen to have a vector free, let's make a new static method in a static class. And we'll pop the attribute initialize on load over it. And for all those that don't know, this gets called when Unity boots. And if we pop in our secret source, we're off to the races. In this new static method, we'll check the property type is vector free. And then we'll create a new menu item called zero, which you guessed it, will zero out the vector free. Now, back into Unity, we can now go crazy setting everything to zero. So now it's the recurring segment that I've never done before called community challenge time. I'd like people to try jumping into the comments and saying what amazing functionality they could add as contextual properties. You see, I want people to add to these videos so that when they come back to other videos, they get some little tips from the community because I can't tell you all of them. And I promise if there's some really good results, I may release how to set a random value to a property that has the range attribute. So there's something to look forward to. And if you don't, well, I'm just gonna kill a small fluffy bunny rabbit by feeding it to our friend here. <laughs> 